Hello friends, I'm Trinity Scott with Overnight Games. Today I'm going to teach you how to play King of Tokyo Dark Edition. Designed by Richard Garfield, art by Paul Mafian, published by Yellow. This is a two to six player game that plays in about 30 minutes. If you enjoyed the video, like and subscribe. The goal is to be the last monster standing or the first player to 20 victory points. Now, let's get going. Let's talk about this setup. This is going to be for a three player game. First, place the board in the middle of the table. Then grab the power card, shuffle them out, deal three out. Make sure that dice are to the point where everybody can reach for them because we're all going to be sharing the dice. Make sure the energy tokens and the other tokens are within reach of everyone. On the right hand side of the game, you're going or the board, you're going to be placing the wickedness tiles. Now, if you look at the wickedness tiles on the bottom right hand corner, there's going to be a number. For example, here is 10, 6, and 3. Make sure that those tiles are next to the numbers on the board. The first game you're going to play with the red side up. After that, you can switch over to the green side for a little bit more variability and a little bit harder cards. Each player is going to grab their player board, their standee, and a wickedness token. And you're going to place the wickedness token in the bottom right hand corner of the board so you can climb up that track a little bit later on. And your player board is going to be set for zero victory points because we're just starting out the game. And 10 health. Play. So to begin with, everyone is going to roll the six gray dice, and whoever has the most claws is going to be the first player. If there's a tie, everybody's going to roll again to see who has the most claws. Now, the first player is going to start their turn just like any other throughout the game. You're going to roll the dice. So you're going to get three chances. You roll the dice, and you decide which ones you're going to keep out. Maybe you're going for ones or threes or... Um, energy tokens. So you keep out the energy token, you roll again, you keep out whichever ones you want, so two more energy tokens, and then you roll for a third time. Whatever, unless you have a card that gives you multiple rolls or uh, you can re-roll specific dice, you're going to only roll three times. So now the turn is done and you have to resolve the dice. When you have electricity or energy tokens on, you're going to grab those energy tokens from the pool. So if you roll the heart, you're going to gain life. You're going to move your tracker up. Now keep in mind, you can't go above 10 unless you have an additional card that gives you that ability or possibly a uh, wickedness card tile that would give you that ability. But for the most part, you only get to go up to 10. Now, caveat, if you are inside of Tokyo, you don't get to gain any hearts because you know, you're battling it out, so you don't have time to, to recharge. As we talked about, the power tokens are going to give you one power token, so you're able to purchase cards at the end of your turn. The claws are going to uh, give you the ability to attack people. So if you're inside of Tokyo and you roll those claws, you're going to attack everybody that's outside of Tokyo. If someone's outside of Tokyo and they roll the claw, they're only going to attack you, and that's when you get to decide whether you want to jump out or not. Now. If you begin your turn in Tokyo, you're going to gain two victory points. If you go into Tokyo, so let's say you attack somebody and they get out and then you move in like so, you're going to gain one victory point. So you're going to really move up those victory points while controlling Tokyo. Downside is you can't heal yourself, so everybody's going to be attacking you. Um, now let's talk about the numbers on here. In order to really get these going, you need three of them. So if you have three ones, that's going to give you one victory point. If you have three twos, it gives you two victory points. And if you have three threes, it gives you three victory points. You also get victory points if you have additional numbers. So for example, if you had three ones and another one, you would actually get two victory points. It's You get one victory point for having the set and then one additional one for having the extra one but the same thing happens for twos and threes. So if you had four threes, you would get three victory points for having the set of three, and you would get one additional victory point for having the three. So you get four victory points. Those don't get bigger depending upon the numbers. Now, what's really fun about this game compared to the regular King of Tokyo game is 
what happens when you roll ones and twos. So if you have a set of ones, you actually are going to go up this wickedness track by two. So you get to go up by two. If you have a set of twos, you're going to go up the wickedness track by one. And once you get to these wickedness tiles, so three, six, and nine, the first person there is going to be able to pick whichever wickedness tile that they want. And some of these are really good. At the start of your turn, gain one heart. That's whether you're in the city or not. So these are really, really helpful depending upon which ones you grab. The first person gets to grab whichever one they want, and they leave the rest for the next person up. And these are going to be, for the most part, through the entire game benefits. So that's huge. And they get even better as you get higher. So the first person to six would be able to grab one. Maybe you gain an additional one extra dice every time. And then the first person to 10 would be able to grab the one of these. Double all of your attack. So these get really strong, and it's a huge benefit that you didn't really see in that first King of Tokyo game. The next step is going to be entering Tokyo. So if you attacked, you would attack the person, and they would go down to health, and they would decide if they want to stay in Tokyo or leave it. If they decide to leave it, whoever attacked them has to go into Tokyo. Now, if during this part of the phase there's no one in Tokyo, you have to go. So the first player is going to be in Tokyo at the beginning. Um, then you get to buy cards. So this is the second to last phase. And however many tokens you have, the energy tokens, you get to buy cards if you have enough to purchase them. So the purchasing power or the purchasing number is going to be in the top left of the card. And then the card's ability is going to be in the bottom. And there's two basic types of abilities. One is you're going to use a card and discard it and get whatever the benefit is. And the other one is going to allow you to keep it. So you're, this is an ongoing ability that you have. And then you end your turn. So at this point, you're going to pass the six dice to the next player, and they're going to go through the motions accordingly. They're going to roll the dice, resolve the dice, uh, enter Tokyo if they need to, and buy power cards in their turn and pass on the dice. And the end of the game is whoever reaches 20 victory points first or the only monster left alive. Whichever one comes first, that player is now Dark King of Tokyo. Final thoughts. We love King of Tokyo Regular Edition, but this Dark Edition adds just so much more with the ones and the twos. Like being able to move up this wickedness track and get those extra special abilities, I feel like really adds to the game. And the art, oh my goodness, it's beautiful. Like I love the the dark art, the the really cool pictures, the colors. Like I feel like because most of it's black, the colors that they do use really, really pop. If you haven't yet, I suggest checking it out. And until next time, stay safe. Oh, if you have any questions, put them in the comments down below. We would be happy to answer them as quickly as we can. If you have any questions, until next time, stay safe and stay happy.